from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of BizOps Manifesto Unveiled, brought to you by BizOps Coalition. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE, coming to you from our Palo Alto studios today for a big, big reveal. We're excited to be here. It's the BizOps Manifesto Unveiling. A thing's been in the works for a while and we're excited to have our next guest, one of the, really the powers behind this whole effort. And he's joining us from Boston. It's Serge Lucio, the Vice President and General Manager, Enterprise Software Division at Broadcom. Serge, great to see you. Uh, good to see you, Jeff. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So you've been in this business for a very long time. You've seen a lot of changes in technology. What is the BizOps Manifesto? What is this coalition all about? Why do we need this today in, in 2020? Yeah, so, so I've been in this business for close to 25 years, right? So about 20 years ago, the Agile Manifesto was created. And, and the goal of the Agile Manifesto was, was really to address the uncertainty around software development and the inability to predict uh, the effort to build software. And uh, if, you, if you roll back kind of 20 years later, and uh, if you look at the current state of the industry, uh, the Product Ma Project Management Institute estimates that uh, we're wasting about a million dollars every 20 seconds in digital transformation initiatives that do not deliver on business results. In fact, we, we recently surveyed uh, the, uh, a number of executives in partnership with uh, Harvard Business Review, and 77% of, uh, of those executives think that one of the key challenges that they have is really in, at the collaboration between business and IT. And that, that's been kind of a case for uh, almost 20 years now. Um, so the, the, the key challenge we're faced with is really that we need a new approach. And many of the players in the industry, including ourselves, have been using different terms, right? Some are, be, are talking about value stream management. Some are talking about uh, software delivery management. If you look at the site reliability engineering movement, in many ways, it embodies a lot of these kind of concepts and principles. So we, we believe that it became really imperative for us to crystallize around kind of one concept. And so in many ways, the, uh, the BizOps concept and the BizOps manifesto are about bringing together a number of ideas which have been emerging in the last five years or so and, and defining the key values and principles to finally help these organizations truly transform and become digital businesses. And so the hope is that by joining our forces and defining kind of the key principles and values, we can help kind of the industry, uh, not just uh, by you know, providing them with support, but also uh, the tools and consulting that is required for them to truly achieve the kind of transformation that everybody's seeking. Right, right. So COVID now we're six months into it, approximately seven months into it. Um, a lot of pain, a lot of bad stuff still happening. We've got a ways to go. But one of the things that on the positive side, right, and you've seen all the memes and social media is, is a driver of digital transformation and a driver of change because we had this light switch moment in the middle of March and there was no more planning. There was no more conversation. You've suddenly got remote workforces. Everybody's working from home and you got to go, right? So your reliance on these tools increases dramatically. But I'm curious, you know, kind of short of, of the beginnings of this effort and short of kind of COVID, which, you know, came along unexpectedly. I mean, what were those inhibitors? Because we've been making software for a very long time, right? The software development community has, has adopted kind of rapid change and, and iterative uh, delivery and, and sprints. What was holding back the connection with the business side to make sure that those investments were properly aligned with outcomes? Well, so, so the, you have to understand that IT is, is kind of uh, its own silos. And, and traditionally, IT has been treated as a cost center uh, within large organizations and not as a value center. And so as a result, kind of a, the, the traditional dynamic between IT and the business is basically one of a, a kind of supplier uh, to, to kind of a business. Um, and uh, you know, if you, if you go back to, uh, I think Elon Musk uh, a few years ago, uh, basically had these concepts of uh, you know, the machines to build the machines. And uh, he went as far as saying that uh, the, the machines or the production line is actually the product. So uh, meaning that the core of the innovation is really about uh, building kind of the engine to deliver on the value. And so in many ways, you know, we, we have missed on this shift from 
um, kind of IT becoming this kind of value center within the enterprises. And, and it's all about culture. Now, culture is a, is a sum total of behaviors. And, and the reality is that if you look at IT, especially in the last decade, uh, with Agile, with DevOps, with um, hybrid infrastructures, uh, it's, it's way more volatile today than it was 10 years ago. And so the, when you start to look at the velocity of the data, the volume of data, the variety of data to analyze kind of this system, um, it's, it's very challenging for IT to actually even understand and optimize its own processes, let alone um, to actually include business as kind of an integral part of kind of a delivery chain. And so it, it's both kind of a combination of, of culture, uh, which is required, uh, as well as tools, right, to be able to start to bring together all these data together. And then given the volume, variety, velocity of the data, uh, we have to apply some core technologies which have only really truly emerged in the last five to 10 years around machine learning and analytics. And so it's really kind of a combination of those things which are coming together today to really help organizations kind of get to the next level. Right. Right, so let's talk about the manifesto. Let's talk about uh, the coalition, uh, the BizOps coalition. I, I just like that you put down these really simple, you know, kind of straightforward core values. You guys have four core values that you're highlighting. You know, business outcomes over individual projects and outputs, trust and collaboration over sideload teams and organizations, data-driven decisions, what you just talked about, uh, you know, over opinions and judgment, uh, and learn, respond, and pivot. I mean, <laughs> Sergi, sounds like pretty basic stuff, right? I mean, aren't, isn't everyone working to these values already? And I, th I think you touched on it on culture, right? Trust and collaboration, data-driven decisions. I mean, these are fundamental ways that people must run their business today or th the, the person that's across the street that's doing it is going to knock them uh, right off their block. Yeah, I, so that's very true. But uh, so I'll, I'll mention another survey we did, uh, I think about six months ago, and it was in partnership with, uh, with uh, an industry analyst. And we surveyed, uh, again, a number of IT executives to understand how many were tracking business outcomes, how many of these software executives, IT executives were tracking business outcomes. And the, there were less than 15% of these executives who were actually uh, tracking the outcomes of a software delivery. And, and you see that every day, right? So in my own teams, for instance, we've been adopting a lot of these core principles in the last year or so. And we've uncovered that 16% of our resources were basically aligned around initiatives which are not strategic for us. Um, I take you know, another example, for instance, one of our uh, customers in the, uh, in the airline industry uncovered, for instance, that uh, a number of, uh, um, that they had software issues that led to people searching for flights and uh, not returning any kind of availability. And yet, um, you know, the IT teams, whether it's operations, software development, were completely oblivious to that because they were completely blindsided to it. And so the, the connectivity between kind of the inwards metrics that IT is using, whether it's database IT time, cycle time, or whatever metric we use in IT, are, are typically completely divorced from the business metrics. And so at its core, it's really about starting to align the business metrics with, with the, the, the software delivery chain, right? This, uh, this system, which is really a core differentiator for these organizations. It's about connecting those two things and, and starting to um, infuse some of the agile culture and principles um, that emerge from the software side into the business side. Um, of course, the lean movement and other movements have started to change some of these dynamics on the, on the business side. And, and so I think this, this is the moment where we, we are starting to see kind of the imperative to transform now. You know, COVID obviously has been a key driver for that. The, um, the technologies, right, to start to be able to weave data together and, and really kind of a, also the cultural shifts uh, through Agile, through DevOps, through uh, the SRE movement, uh, through lean um, business transformation, all of these things are coming together and are really creating kind of the conditions for the, the BizOps manifesto to exist. So uh, Clayton Christensen, great uh, Harvard professor, Innovator's Dilemma, my, still my all time favorite business book, you know, talks about how difficult it is for incumbents to react to 
to disruptive change, right? Because they're always working on incremental change because that's what their customers are asking for and there's a good ROI. When you talk about you know, companies not measuring the right thing, I mean, clearly IT has some portion of their budget that has to go to keeping the lights on, right? That, that's always the case, but hopefully that's a, an ever decreasing percentage of their total activity. So, you know, what should people be measuring? I mean, what are kind of the new metrics um, in, in biz ops that drive people to be looking at the right things, measuring the right things, and subsequently making the right decisions, investment decisions on whether they should do, you know, move project A along or project B? So there, there are really two things, right? So, so I think what you were talking about is portfolio management, investment management, right? And um, which, which is a key challenge, right? Um, in my own experience, right, uh, driving strategy or a large scale kind of software organization for years, um, it's very difficult to even get kind of a base data as to who is doing what. Uh, um, I mean, some of our largest customers we're engaged with right now are simply trying to get a very simple answer, which is how many people do I have in that specific initiative at any point in time? And, and just tracking that information is extremely difficult. So, and, and again, back to the Product, Project Management Institute, um, they, have, they have estimated that on average, IT organizations have anywhere between 10 to 20% of their resources focused on initiatives which are not strategically aligned. So, so that's one dimension on portfolio management. I think the, the key aspect though that we are, we are really keen on is really around kind of the alignment of the business metrics to the IT metrics. Um, so I'll, I'll use kind of two simple examples, right? And uh, my background is around quality and I've always believed that fitness for purpose is, is really kind of a key um, kind of philosophy, if you will. And so if you start to think about quality as fitness for purpose, you start to look at it from a customer point of view, right? And fitness for purpose for a core banking application or mobile application are different, right? So the definition of a business value that you're trying to achieve is different. Um, and so, the, and yet, if you look at how IT operations are operating, they are using kind of the same type of, uh, kind of inward metrics, uh, like a database uptime or a cycle time, or what is my point velocity, right? And, uh, and so the challenge really is this inward facing metrics that the IT is using which are divorced from ultimately the outcome. And so, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying to build a core banking application, my core metric is likely going to be uptime, right? If I'm, if I'm trying to build a mobile application or maybe a social uh, mobile app, it's probably going to be engagement. And so what you want is for everybody across IT to look at this metric and what are the metrics within the, the software delivery chain which ultimately contribute to that business metric. In some cases, cycle time may be completely irrelevant, right? Again, my core banking app, maybe I don't care about cycle time. And so it's really about aligning those metrics and be able to start to differentiate. Um, the, the key challenge you mentioned uh, around, the, the, um, uh, around the, the disruption that we see is, or, or the investors is, dilemma is really around the fact that many IT organizations are essentially applying the same approaches uh, for innovation, right? For basically scrap work, then they would apply to kind of over more traditional projects. And so, you know, there's been a lot of talk about to speed IT, and yes, it exists, but in reality, are, are really organizations um, truly differentiating um, how they operate their, their projects and products based on the outcomes that they're trying to achieve. And this is really where BizOps is, is trying to affect. I love that, you know, again, it, it, it doesn't seem like brain surgery, but focus on the outcomes, right? And, and it's horses for courses, as you said, this project, you know, what you're measuring and how you define success isn't necessarily the same as, as on this other project. So let's talk about some of the principles. We talked about the values, but, you know, I think it's interesting that, that, that the BizOps Coalition, you know, just basically took the time to write these things down and they don't seem all that uh, super insightful, but I guess you just got to get them down and have them on paper and have them in front of your face. But I want to talk about, you know, one of the key ones, which you just talked about, which is changing requirements, right? And working in a dynamic situation, which is really what's driven you know, this, the software, the change in software development, because, you know, if you're in a game app and your competitor comes out with a new blue sword, you got to come out with a new blue sword. So whether you had that on your Kanban wall 
or not. So it's, it's really this embracing uh, of the speed of change and, 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 and making that you know, the rule, not the exception. I think that's a phenomenal one. And the other one you talked about is data, right? And that today's organizations generate more data than humans can process, so informed decisions must be generated by machine learning and AI. And, you know, and the, the big data thing with Hadoop, you know, started years ago, but we are seeing more and more that people are finally figuring it out, that it's not just big data, uh, and it's not even generic machine learning or artificial intelligence, but it's applying those particular data sets and that particular types of algorithms to a specific problem to your point to try to actually uh, reach an objective, whether that's you know increasing the, your average ticket or you know increasing your checkout rate with, with, with shopping carts that don't get left behind and these types of things. So it's a really different way to think about the world in the good old days, probably when you got started when we had big giant you know, MRDs and PRDs and sat down and coded for two years and, and came out with a product release and hopefully not too many patches subsequently to that. <laughs> it, it's interesting, right? It, um, again, back to, to one of these surveys that we did with, uh, with about 600 ITA executives. And, uh, and, and we, we purposely designed those questions to be pretty open. Um, and, and one of them was really wrong requirements. And, uh, and it was really around uh, kind of what, do you, what is the best approach? What is your preferred approach towards requirements? And I, if I remember correctly, over 80% of the IT executives said that the best approach, their preferred approach, is for requirements to be completely defined before software development starts. So let me pause there. We're 20 years after the Agile Manifesto, right? And for 80% of these ID executives to basically claim that the best approach is for requirements to be fully baked before, so before software development starts, basically shows that we still have a very major issue. And again, our hypothesis in working with many organizations is that the, the key challenge is really the boundary between business and IT, which is still very much contract-based. If you look at uh, you know, the business side, they basically are expecting for IT to deliver on time, on budget, right? But what is the incentive for IT to actually deliver on the business outcomes, right? How often is IT measured on the business outcomes and not on an SLA or on a budget type criteria? And so that, that's really the fundamental shift that we, we need to, we really need to drive at as an industry. Um, and yeah, we, we talk about kind of this, this imperative for organizations to operate as one, and uh, back to the, the um, innovators dilemma, the key difference between these larger organizations is, is really kind of a, if you look at the, the amount of uh, capital investment that they can put into pretty much anything, why are they losing compared to, um, you know, startups? Why, why is it that, uh, more than 40% of, uh, of personal loans today are issued not by your traditional brick and mortar banks, but by um, startups. Well, the reason, yes, it's the traditional culture of doing incremental changes and not disrupting ourselves, which Blake Christensen covered at length, but it's also the, the inability to really fundamentally change kind of a dynamic between business and IT and, and, and partner. Right to to deliver on a, a specific business outcome. Right, um, I, I love that. That's a great that's a great summary. And in fact, getting ready for this interview, I saw you mentioning another thing where you know the the problem with the agile uh, development is that you're actually now getting more silos because you have all these autonomous people working, you know, kind of independently. So it's even a harder challenge for for the business leaders to to, to as you said to know what's actually going on. But but Serge, I w I want to close um, and talk about the coalition. Um, so clearly these are all great concepts. These are concepts you want to apply to your business every day. Why the coalition? Why you know, take these concepts out to a broader uh, audience, including your, your competition and, and the broader industry to say, hey, we as a group need to put a stamp of approval on these concepts, these values, these principles. So first, I think we, we want um, everybody to realize that we are all talking about the same things, the same concepts. I think we, we're all from our own different vantage point, realizing that um, things have to change. And, and again, back to you know, whether it's value stream management or site reliability engineering or biz ops, we're all kind of using slightly different languages. 
Um, and so I think one of the important aspects of BizOps is for us, all of us, whether we're talking about you know, consulting, agile transformation experts, uh, whether we're talking about vendors, right, to provide kind of tools and technologies for these large enterprises to transform, for all of us to basically have kind of a reference that lets us speak around kind of um, in, in a much more consistent way. The second aspect is for, to me, is for um, these concepts to start to be embraced, not just by us who are trying, or you know, vendors, um, system integrators, consulting firms, educators, thought leaders, but also for um, some of our own customers to start to become evangelists of their own in the industry. So we are, our objective with the coalition is to be pretty, pretty broad. Um, and our hope is by, by starting to basically educate um, our, our joint customers or, or partners that we can start to really foster these behaviors and, and start to really change uh, some of the dynamics. So we're very pleased that if you look at uh, some of the, the companies which have joined the, 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 the manifesto, um, so we have vendors um, such as Desktop or Advance or um, uh, PagerDuty, for instance, uh, or, or even PlanView, uh, one of my direct competitors, uh, but also thought leaders like Tom Davenport or, uh, or Capgemini or um, um, smaller firms like uh, Business Agility Institute or uh, Agility Elf. Um, and so our, our goal really is to start to bring together uh, thought leaders, people who have been helping large organizations do digital transformation, vendors who are providing the technologies that many of these organizations use to deliver on this digital transformation, and for all of us to start to provide the kind of uh, education, support, and tools that the industry needs. Yeah, that's great, Serge. And uh, you know, congratulations to you and the team. I know this has been uh, going on for a while, putting all this together, getting people to sign on to the manifesto, putting the coalition together, and finally today, getting to unveil it to the world in, in a little bit more of a public uh, opportunity. So again, you know, really good values, really simple principles, something that, that uh, shouldn't have to be written down, but it's nice because it is, and now you can print it out and stick it on your wall. So thank you for, uh, for sharing the story, and again, congrats to you and the team. Thank you, thanks Jeff, appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. All right, he's Serge. If you want to learn more about the BizOps Manifesto, go to bizopsmanifesto.org, read it, and you can sign it. And you can stay here for more coverage on theCUBE of the BizOps Manifesto Unveiled. Thanks for watching. See you next time.